Imagine a world filled with drones delivering packages, searching for lost hikers, or recording a breaking news story. The sky is the limit for using unmanned aerial vehicles, but there is a big challenge. How do you keep them from flying into each other, or anything else for that matter? You know, we're actually going to see more drones take to the skies than we see manned aircraft right now, so we need a way to really manage that airspace and manage that traffic as it's going back and forth, especially as we see services like Amazon, who wants to deliver a UAV or a farmer that wants to use it over his field so that we can have a safe integration of drones into the, the national airspace. Tyler Collins got his company Precision Hawk off to a flying start when he came up with a complete air traffic control system for drones. And he did it in record time. Well, the prototype, you know, it took a weekend. A just, weekend? A weekend, yeah. So we, we made the first prototype in a weekend. We've done a lot since, but we wanted to show that through simple technology that's already existing, we don't have to reinvent the wheel on a lot of these technologies, that we can make a system and build a system that is safe and reliable that will integrate the drones into the national airspace. The system, LATTICE, which stands for Low Altitude Tracking and Avoidance System. A computer chip on board the drone communicates with a software system that knows the location of every object, every house, every tree, every building. If a drone flies too close to anything, the system automatically steers the drone away. How good is this system? Well, ask its chairman of the board and a top investor, Red Hat's Bob Young. It's a terrific business. By getting images, and images of all sorts, radar, photography, uh, from a low altitude allows us to gather data on our resources, whether it's farming, forestry, uh, or mining, uh, at a level of precision that was never before possible. Precision Hawk is one of only three companies in the entire country granted permission by the Federal Aviation Administration to fly these out of sight. And that really unlocks the potential of unmanned aerial vehicles. You could send this in after an environmental disaster or to search for survivors in the rubble after an earthquake. In fact, Precision Hawk was called in after a fire at a landfill in South Carolina. Rescue workers needed to find out what environmental hazards existed so they could start planning an emergency response. A UAV could also help during a flood. And when a lot of flooding occurs, they don't know what kind of chemicals are in that water. So with the UAV, we can actually land on water, take a water quality sample, come back, test that in the lab so we can know what the quality of that water is in varying points across that body of water. Precision Hawk is partnering with universities, including North Carolina State University, with yeah, its top flight unmanned vehicle program. It's just typical of, of what the state of North Carolina do, has done very well. Uh, the story at Red Hat was, I was in Connecticut at the time I partnered with Mark Ewing, we had the opportunity of setting up in Connecticut or setting up in North Carolina because of the investments in the university systems and in the, the innovative environment here in North Carolina. It was an obvious decision for us to do it in North Carolina. Exactly the same factors are at work that are causing Precision Hot to set up here. We are able to find talented kids here in North Carolina as, as effectively, arguably more effectively than we could anywhere else. And it is the caliber of the workforce that's most important to us. But in order for this emerging industry to get off the ground, advocates say we need lawmakers to open up more airspace for research and development. I'm so sympathetic to our legislators who get elected locally here in North Carolina, but they have an obligation to legislate on a global basis because for companies like Red Hat or SAS Institute or Precision Hawk, if they do the right thing for the citizens of North Carolina, but the wrong thing for the citizens of the United States, then companies like Precision Hawk have to go elsewhere. And we don't want to go elsewhere. We like North Carolina. Young says don't think of drones as flying toys. They are data gathering machines. Sensors on board can tell a farmer, for instance, if he needs to add more fertilizer or if there's already plenty there. I'm not putting as much chemicals that's going to run off into the rivers. But on the outside, I'm getting more output out of my crop 
So by 2050, when we have 10 billion people on this earth, we have a way to feed them. And that technology can benefit farmers from Butner to Botswana. The old method of gathering this data by getting an airplane and, and paying an expensive pilot to fly his airplane over the farmer's field was too expensive for a, a, a farmer in Botswana to be able to afford. But throwing a, a little airplane out of the back of a pickup truck is technology that he absolutely can afford and suddenly he can compete in terms of his productivity. The FAA is still working out regulations for drones, but once the lattice system is finished and rolled out, expect the UAV industry to take flight. It is a, a huge compliment to what the team at Precision Hawk is doing uh, because it is a big risk for the FAA to entrust a big part of, of the, uh, uh, this drone uh, regulatory environment to a small North Carolina company, albeit no longer as small as when I got involved, uh, uh, is, is a big com compliment to the caliber uh, of the team at Precision Hawk and by extension the caliber of the kids that we're able to recruit in North Carolina. And another compliment is involvement from a successful businessman like Young because he doesn't invest in fly-by-night companies. So does his very presence guarantee Precision Hawk success? I think of it exactly the opposite way around. I'm going to be famous again because <laughs> of what these brilliant guys at Precision Hawk are doing. But you, you see a winner in this business. That's exactly right. Uh, what this is is a global opportunity, and, and that's sort of how my mind works. I'm a Canadian. I'm living in North Carolina. Uh, I don't think in North Carolina terms. I don't even think in American terms. Uh, I, I tend to look for opportunities that are truly global, whether it's Lulu in publishing or Red Hat in, in software or Precision Hawk uh, in in this low altitude uh, data collection business that we're in. First in Flight North Carolina makes no bones about its desire to be first in unmanned flight as well. With Precision Hawk leading the way, our state's UAV industry should be flying oh. high in no time at all. You invest in great ideas, but great ideas are a dime a dozen. Uh, you really have to invest in great groups of people. Uh, people who are passionate about what they're doing, people who are experts in their field, and who are demonstrating that experts through their innovation. And that's what the Precision Hawk team is doing. Well, it's exciting, and we love North Carolina. And in fact, we have hired over 20 people in the last three months from North Carolina. And as we pull on more investment, and as we grow our company, we want to have it here in North Carolina to really show that North Carolina can be the leader in this space. First in unmanned flight. Exactly. <laughs>